Um, good morning. How you all doing today? That's good. Um, welcome to today's service. And uh, my name is Ido, and I'm here to give the um, announcements before the service commences. First, I want you to know that this service is taking place on the traditional and unceded territory of the Kamloops State's Kwemek people and Kamloops Area First Nation people. We acknowledge their care and working of the land before the arrival of the European settlers. And as Canadian Anglicans, we want to continue to work together towards healing, reconciliation, and a new experience of sharing the land together. Okay, so just in case you get pressed, we have two points for the washroom. Um, if you go through the archway here, you find the washroom um, on the left, and you can also go through the back, all the way downstairs to the hallway, and you find the washroom on the right there. Okay, so this announcement also is coming from the uh, our own very bishop, Plamandon. Uh, for the last push of uh, St. George's, we'll be needing volunteers. So if you're available to attend or volunteer, you could please see um, Claire in the uh, office, okay? I'm here today, so. Oh, sorry. And Bishop is here today, too. Yeah, thank you. And. Um, Okay, and also a very, very special thank you to Bishop Barbara for officiating today. Thank you very much for coming, right? And um, of course, uh, someone is missing today. Can we say who that is? Dean Kyle, okay, so he's on vacation actually, so he won't be available till the end of the month. So for any pastoral emergencies, we could uh, reach out to Reverend Len Fraser. You have his number at the back of the bulletin, okay? So you could just reach out to him. And also, uh, for Trips Shop, the Trips Store will be accepting donations only on Thursdays. Only on Thursdays, uh, uh, July 11th. This Thursday, actually. July 11th from 9 a.m., to 11 a.m. That's in the morning. Okay, uh, you can please use the alley entrance. That's the one between Third and Fourth Avenue. Okay, lost and found. Wood cross necklace, sunglasses, and sun visor. Please see Claire in the office if you've lost any. And um, we got some uh, audio CDs. Okay, and some. Um, Bible versions in the drama form, very dramatic. You enjoy it. So you could borrow one or two or a set of CDs. Just reach out to the office and you will have them. And also, if you want flowers in the cathedral, please reach out to Barry. Call Barry. Where's Barry? Could Barry just read? Okay. So just call. Okay. No problem. Just reach out to him and you will have your flowers. Thank you very much. Have a lovely service. <clears throat> we begin our worship with hymn 362. Tell out my soul.
Well, good morning, everyone. It seems like ever since I've been here, and welcome to those online. We are not wearing robes today because it's nearing 40 degrees in Kamloops this morning. So we're a little bit more relaxed, so, but please join us with enthusiasm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the collect for today. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading this morning is from the second book of Samuel. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led us out of Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who we shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed King David king over Israel. David was 33 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all of Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from Milo inward, and David became greater and greater, for the Lord God of hosts was with him. Hear what the Spirit says to the people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 48, page 765. And we will do it by the half verse. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of the earth is the hills of Zion. God is in her citadels. Behold, the king of the earth assembled. They looked and were astonished. Trembling seized them there. A 
as we have heard, so have we seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God. In the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because Make the circuit of Zion walk around about her. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds. This God is our God forever and ever. Our second reading today is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught out to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but not on my own behalf. I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For the sake of Christ, for whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Hear what the Spirit says to the people. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is 354. We'll sing the first two verses, and then after the gospel, we'll sing the the final verse. Thus far by thy help I've come. 
the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not welcomed, are not honored, except in the except in their hometowns and among their own kin and in their own home. And he could not, he could do deeds of, he could do no deeds of power there except that he laid hands on a few sick and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bake, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of Christ. words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Please be seated. We live in such confusing and complicated world, don't we? There are so many different forces pulling at us, so much happening that it's difficult to make sense of much. And even though our world has made incredible progress, in many ways there are still so many things that are puzzling. 
even something as simple as reading the Bible can be confusing. And Christians often disagree about what the Bible teaches us on certain topics or what we as followers of Jesus should think about pressing issues. But it seems to me that the basic, at the basic level of what the te Bible teaches us and what Jesus teaches us, it's not very confusing. And sometimes it's good for us to simply get back to the basics. So in full disclosure this morning, the idea in this sermon came from a Lutheran pastor in North Carolina. When Anita sent me an email and said, Can, are you going to do a children's talk? I went looking on the internet of how I could talk with the children about this particular gospel reading. And I liked the sermon that I found, or I liked the idea of it. And since our Bible study group didn't meet this week to tell me what to preach on <laughs> or to refine my thoughts, I borrowed much from James Lawrence, his fine sermon for this morning. So most of us here are of an age where we remember the book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Do we know it? Good. It's one of my favorite books, and if you've heard me preach before, you know I've often used this, because it offers life lessons that are not only true, but they were simple and ultimately hopeful. And they remind us that sometimes we adults can get in the way of ourselves by making things too complicated. So we are reminded of some of these simple lessons this morning, like share everything, play fair, put things back where you found them, take an afternoon nap, every afternoon, and when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic. Hold hands and stick together. I like the ideas that we can take inspiration from this little book and allow it to offer us some simple lessons from our gospel reading on how Jesus wants us to live as his followers. As Jesus got ready to send his apostles out on their first missionary trip, he gave them some clear instructions. And I'm focusing on Mark 6, 7 to 13 this morning. And from these instructions, James Lawrence, has identified five simple rules that we can hold on to as followers of Jesus. Well, in keeping with the spirit of this little book, I will list them and then I'm going to go back and fill in some of the details. So here are the five lessons that Jesus teaches us today on how to live as his followers. Don't be a Christian alone. Remember that Jesus is the boss. Travel light. Don't get discouraged when you fail. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. So, lesson one. Don't be a Christian alone. 
Jesus identified his 12 apostles and now is getting ready to send them out on a mission. The first thing that he does is pairs them up, kind of like kindergarten or maybe a school field trip. Hold hands and stick together. Jesus teaches us something very similar. Stick together. Don't try to be a Christian alone. Throughout Jesus' ministry, when he calls disciples, the first thing he does is make us part of a community, a community we call the church. He calls us into community because he knows that it's too hard to be a Christian alone. We need each other. I don't know about you, but for me the pandemic was a powerful reminder of the gift and blessing of the church community. We discovered we truly needed each other and we are better together. Jesus gathered his disciples together and he gathers us together too. And even when he sends us back out into the world, he pairs us up first. For Jesus, there is no such thing as a Lone Ranger Christian because life is too hard to go it alone. We need his help and his presence. And we need each other. We need others to help us along the journey. The second lesson, remember that Jesus is the boss. In the next verses of the gospel, we find our second lesson. We read, Jesus gave them authority over the unclean spirits, which means that when we go out in the world, we go because Jesus has given us authority to do so. As he said in the Great Commission in Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So we go in confidence because Jesus has given us authority, which is only his to give. He's the boss. But he puts us in charge. So now we have authority to go in his name. He has entrusted us with his work. This is the mission of the church, to do what he has commanded with trust and confidence that we are doing what Jesus wants. Well, for us older siblings here today, maybe you remember back when your mom and dad would go out and leave you in charge. <laughs> when it happened, we always reminded our siblings of it, of course, didn't we? I'm in charge. Mom and dad said so which was pretty fun until something got broken or somebody got hurt. As Christians, we are sometimes like older children of the world. We have been put in charge. Jesus has given us authority and we should embrace that. But we should also remember that we're not the parents. We are just in charge until Jesus returns. So the third lesson, travel light. 
The third lesson Jesus gives is this one. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. In other words, we are supposed to travel light when we go out on the mission that Jesus has sent us out to. Why? Because travel in light means that we are trusting in Jesus. Traveling light means that we don't need a backup plan. We only need to follow instructions and trust our boss. Traveling light means that we already have everything we need to serve our Lord. We don't need to read another book or make more money, have more time, solve whatever problems we are facing in our own lives, or do anything else before we go to serve the Lord. We already have everything we need right now to do what Jesus is asking so we can and should travel light. The fourth lesson, don't get discouraged when you fail. The fourth lesson that Jesus offers, we can find in verses 10 and 11. He says to the 12, wherever, where, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as testimony against them. Well, we go out on this mission with a caution. Not everyone will accept us or our message with open arms. There will be some that will refuse to hear us for whatever reason. But all we need to do with them is to entrust them to God and to move on. It's not our responsibility to successfully bring God's kingdom into the world. As if we could, all on our own. And to that I say thanks be to God. It is our task to enter a community, do as Jesus asks, and if we are not welcome there, to shake the dust off our feet and to move on. So what's the simple lesson here? Don't get discouraged when you fail. If the 12 apostles were told that they would sometimes fail, then we should expect to fail too. But I like to think of the word fail as faith active in love. When our faith is active in love, then we are serving our God and when we seem to be failing, we shouldn't get discouraged. Failure in the eyes of the world might just be overwhelming success in the eyes of God. Doesn't the cross prove that to us? So lesson number five. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. So don't get discouraged when you fail. Travel light. Remember that Jesus is the boss. Don't be a Christian alone. And finally, 
don't be afraid to tell the truth. When the apostles were sent out, it was to cast out demons and heal the sick, but it was also to proclaim that all should repent. Repent, turn from your sins, turn from your false hopes and false gods, and turn or return to the Lord. Our world is so quick to offer false gods and false hopes. It always has been and it always will be. But as followers of Jesus, part of our task is to point this out and to remind the world that there is only one God and only one source of hope. We as Christians should know more than anyone how very dependent we are on our amazing God. And we should not be afraid to express it and to invite the world to depend on God too. Because there is no better way to live in these confusing and challenging times. That's why I kind of like these five basic lessons. They help me to remember. Don't try to be a Christian alone. Remember that Jesus is boss, thankfully. Travel light, trusting that Jesus has given us everything we need to accomplish his mission. Don't get discouraged when we fail. And don't be afraid to speak the truth. Five simple lessons we can learn from today's gospel reading. Five things we can do to get back to the basics. And my prayer is that we live these lessons faithfully until the boss returns and invites us to rest. Amen. Amen. Will you turn to page 188 and stand and say with me the Nicene Creed? Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God. forgot it on the other side. proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, is spoken through the prophets, 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray, you may take the most convenient position for you. You may sit, kneel, or stand. And as we pray today, our refrain to the word Almighty God shall be, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear our prayer. And so, Father God, we pray for people in the Anglican ministry, leadership locally and globally. We pray for Linda Nichols, primate. We pray for Lynn McNaughton, the Archbishop. We pray for Chris Harper, the National Indigenous Archbishop, and our own very Bishop Clara Plamendon. We pray for our Dean, the very Reverend Dr. Carl Norman and Rector. We pray for Bob Pardy, Len Fraser, and Dan Hines. And for all lay leaders, and for all those who support them, we pray that, O oh Lord, your grace will rest upon them. Almighty God, hear our prayer. In the territory of the people, we pray for the Metropolitan, Archbishop Lynn McNaughton, her husband, the Reverend Garrett Hobbs. We pray for the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, the primate, the church house staff, the Council for General Synod. We pray for the Provincial Executive Council, their families, and all who support them. We pray that the peace of God will dwell in their hearts. Almighty God, and in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Indian Ocean. We pray, O oh Lord, that your power and the love of God will continue to radiate in their hearts. Almighty God, hear our prayer. In our sister diocese of Montreal, we pray for Christ Church Sorrel. We pray for the Reverend Dennis Gavry. We pray, O oh Lord, that the power to continue in faith and to do the biddings of your word will be unto them. Almighty God, hear our prayer. In the St. Paul prayer cycle, we pray for Judy Waddington, Wev Barker, we pray for Mavis Chalmers, Victor Bifarno, and Deborah Gray. We ask, O oh God, that your peace, that surpass all understanding, will guide their hearts, and provisions be made unto them. Almighty God. We pray for the sick. We pray for the homeless. We pray for the hungry. We ask, O oh God, that you will restore unto them their health and provide for them all their needs. Almighty God. We pray for the needy and the weary. Father God, we ask that in your mercy you will grant all their requests every request in their heart. Almighty God, we pray for all nations that are in distress 
or war right now. We pray, Father God, please stop the hand of destruction and death and restore peace. Almighty God. We pray for those in governance, political and academic leadership, that their actions and decisions will always be to please the Lord. Almighty God. We pray for as many individuals and families that have written a request to you. We pray that you will surprise them and bring all their requests to pass. Almighty God. And also we pray that the word of God that we heard today will live for, with us forever. Almighty God. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in everlasting in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I'm sorry I don't know what your customs are here in passing of the peace at St. Paul's. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Share the peace in whatever strange ways you do it. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Now the fun part, eh? Offertory hymn is number 87 in more voices.
comes to us so precious, living water gives us birth. Do I have two people doing Drinking the source of life. Our spirit grow. Oh, Water rushing down the river. Water rushing to the sea. Water comes to us so precious. Living water makes us free. Drink deep and know, for living water sings, and living water brings the love that makes our spirit grow. Water springing from the dry place, water springing in the sun. Water comes to us so precious, living water for each one. Yeah. Drink deep the, the source of life. Drink deep and know. For living water sings, and living water brings the love that makes our spirit grow. Let us pray. God of, oops, sorry. God of heaven and earth, receive our sacrifice of praise and strengthen us for the perfect freedom of your service through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to use Eucharistic Prayer 2 found on page 196. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you created all things by the power of the Holy Spirit. He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you, a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and our sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, given thanks that you had made us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. I think I got lost here. My apologies. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and these cups, given thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, gathering into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. page 212 we use sentence number two we break this bread to share in the body of Christ these my friends are the gifts of God for you the beloved people of God all are welcome at this table. Now I've changed things. We're going to communicate up here after you receive communion. So the banquet's ready. Come on forward. And who's doing what here? Okay. This is a little full song.
body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. in the world, and so come to the fullness of joy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Now, normally, the bishop would give the blessing, so I don't know if the bishop wants to give the blessing today. Thank you. Our dismissal song, Go Now in Peace. Thank you. Our final hymn is 216 in more voices. 216. <clears throat>